Good morning! I usually start these videos by saying welcome to a dealer-only auction. Not today. Welcome to a government public auction. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you, with or without a dealer's license, can buy cars at auction at wholesale prices, sometimes with no extra fees at a discount. I am at the Richmond Auto Auction in Richmond, Virginia today. I flew down from New Hampshire to see what they had, to see if I could pick up some rust-free cars. And I'll tell you what, there are lots of them all the way down. And not just Ford Tauruses and Chevy Impalas. There's Buicks, there's Suburbans, there's Tahoes, there's Expeditions, there's pickup trucks. There's a little bit of everything. Everything. And there's hundreds of cars here today that we're going to check out to see what we can drive, to see what we can take home, and if the prices are lower at a government auction than if you could just buy them online in Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or private part. You're going to join me in the whole experience today. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So these are government sale vehicles. What's cool about getting these government sale vehicles, most of them are maintained regularly because we as taxpayers pay for the government to have them maintained. So most of the time we're getting cleaner, more maintained or better maintained vehicles by buying government cars. Like for example, you'll see this one is a police car right down the side, police. I wouldn't necessarily want a police car and that's not what we're here to find. I don't want police cars that have been stopped and go and stop and go. They sit at idle for too long oftentimes and that puts premature wear on the engine while still having low miles. But there are a lot of other vehicles here that aren't just police cars. And we're gonna go check those out as well. For example, we have a 2013 with 89,000 miles, a 2013 with 78,000 miles. When states and towns get new vehicles, these come to the government auctions. They get stripped down, all the police badging comes off the side and then they go to the auction. But there's more than just police cars. There's a lot of other municipal vehicles like Ford Escapes, Ford F-150, 50s, Jeep Grand Cherokees, Chevy Cobalt that you can buy for yourself oftentimes at a discount. Now there's more than just police cars here. You can see here is a 2011 Chevy Tahoe with 111,000 miles. Now a lot of these vehicles are like base vehicles so you don't always get leather and heated seats and sunroofs because the government's not only provided with all those luxury amenities, they're provided with the essential. But there are still some pretty neat cars that you can find here for yourself. You'll see this whole row. We have work vans which are hard to find. We have some Challengers, some Dodge Avengers or Chrysler 300s, whatever that is, Dodge Rams, Chevy Suburbans, and this is the one I wanna show you that's best of all. This Chevy Suburban right here is for sure on my radar. This is a 2004 Suburban with 84,000 miles. Now, I live in the Rust Belt. I live in New England. This, Virginia, no rust. Where I come from, these are usually completely rotted. It's perfect. It's a perfect 84,000 mile 2004 car, which to be honest with you, doesn't exist where I come from, which is wild. Now this is a government vehicle, low mileage, maintained. The problem is you can't get service records, so I just have to assume they're maintained because they're government vehicles. You could pull a Carfax and try to find the Carfax on each vehicle, but they will show up as either one owner or no owner. Sometimes when I buy them, I'll get the original MSO certificate or an application for title. Because they're government vehicles, they're not always titled, which isn't a problem for you because you just just go put a title in your name. Now you can see here we have a Chevy Tahoe 2 new body style, which is really neat. We have a Dodge Ram base work truck with a Hemi. Going to Chevy Tahoe, we do have cloth seats. We do have, we do not have third row, so that's kind of what you're getting when you get government vehicles. They don't need a third row. They're not family vehicles, they're work vehicles. 64,000 miles. This right here is a 2015 Dodge Ram with 9,000 miles. We have the pleather interior, the work truck interior. We have crank windows, but you do have power windows, power locks. So you are getting decent vehicles here. You're just not getting luxury vehicles. Pretty cool though to see a 2015 Ram with 9,000 miles. We have a Chevy Impala from 2017. We have a we have a 2016 Chrysler 300 and then Dodge Charger right here. Here's what's neat too. Passenger vans aren't easy to find. And here we have a what? 14 passenger van that you can't just go buy. Like these things aren't easily accessible. Or if you're looking for a work van that are really, really difficult to come by and very expensive right now, just remove these seats. You have a giant work van. Now I have a dealer's license, so I can buy these things while I'm here, but I can also buy all these cars behind me. Those are dealer only vehicles like trade-ins and dealers that wanna sell their cars here, they're wholesalers. Those are cars you need a dealer's license for. There's dealer fees to, when you like when you buy the cars here, there are buyer's fees for dealers. Most of these vehicles don't have buyer's fees, which is really, really neat. Something like that, like that F-250, that jacked up F-250, or there's a Camaro ZL1. Those you're not gonna find at the government auctions, you find at the dealer auctions. If you ever wanted to get your wholesale license so you can get into places like these, Go to www.startyourdealership.com. I've created an entire program to teach you how to do that. Welcome to startyourdealership.com.
Imagine if you can go back 20 years and teach yourself everything you know now. That's what this course is. If you really wanted auction access for yourself, www.startyourdealership.com will teach you everything you need to know, the ins, the outs, the tricks, the vendors to use, the way to find the right places, the insurances, all that stuff is there. But if you don't just want to buy public, this is for you, these government sales. Now you'll even see like a 2015 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, 54,000 miles. That's a heck of a car for somebody, maybe a first car or a commuter vehicle. So it's not just plain white work vans and trucks here. Here's another, a 2016 Hyundai Accent with 59,000 miles. And then it's in this line, but I can't see how this would be a government vehicle, even though it does say G on it. G mean government? Would there be a Jeep Wrangler? I don't know, that seems a little peculiar. Now, like I said, because I'm a dealer, I'll be bidding on this slingshot. I'm also gonna be bidding on that little birdie over there. All right, the GSA sale has started. The government auction has started. We have trucks running through already. This is a 15 Tahoe with 64,000 miles going here right now. Let's check it out. This is the one we looked at that had the base interior and no third row seat. $22,000. That Suburban I was really interested in. What I just realized, I'm in Virginia. Not everything is four wheel drive. I have to make sure these cars are four wheel drive. I didn't even think of that. They're, everything's four wheel drive when I'm wrong. Close over 23 cents. Grand. That is every dollar for this truck. I'm so disappointed. I wanted this thing so bad. 8200 plus a buyer's fee. If this had a buyer's fee, like $300. I have to check on buyer's fees here. Some GSA sales do have buyer's fees, some do not. I'll find out and let you know in this video. Plus to ship it back to New Hampshire, $600. I'd be in that truck for almost 10 grand. It's a 2004, but they're just not, they're not interested right now. We completely forgot that a lot of these trucks can be four wheel drive. So you have to make sure when you look at this screen, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, three wheel drive. 2014 Taurus police car, 87,000 miles. It is at $4,600. There's another one, and they just keep going. Police car after police car, 14 with 93,000 miles. Six grand. I have no idea on the police car. Do they desire what people want? I have no clue. So I'd love to hear your opinion. Well, the GSA sale is over, and I gotta say, I think the prices were pretty fair. Now, GSA government service vehicles, again, you can find these all over the country. This one is specific to Richmond Auto Auction, it's Motley's Richmond Auto Auction. I flew down here because I wanted to find rust free vehicles, and that Suburban was a big one. There was a Yukon that was a big one for me that I kind of wish I bought. Now, I didn't come down here for this specific auction. I shot the footage because I want to show you guys you don't always need a dealer's license to buy wholesale. You can find auctions like these all over the country. There are government surplus auctions. Like I live in New Hampshire, and every season they have a government surplus auction. Uh, they do have buyer's premiums, so buyer's fees when you do buy stuff that can add them on. Simple as Googling your local GSA sale or government surplus auction to find them for yourself. Now you do have to title them in your name because you don't have a dealer's license. We get to reassign them to us and then to the next buyer. So we'd save them some sales tax and registration. But you guys would have to either title them in your names, pay the sales tax, and etc. And then if you were buying them to sell them for profit, then be able to sell the vehicle with the new title from you to the next person. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was entertaining. There's auctions everywhere. Go out and find some for yourself. Thanks for watching. Hey, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications every time I make a new video. Thanks for watching. See you later. Adios.